Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me just, uh, uh, first thing first, uh, I will just take uh, one quick shot who, of the audience. It's actually, since we have Brian Lunduki in the, um, in the board, it's actually, oh, we are obligated to do so, so. <laughs> okay, so, OpenQA. Uh, OpenQA is the uh, next big thing, but uh, before I blow it up, uh, let's just uh, take a little history lesson. So, uh, uh, just to see what you may, what, uh, the motivation, why the OpenQA was created and so on. So, this is uh, very similar to how regular software is de was developed uh, before some uh, changes in, uh, uh, in um, uh, uh, development phase also. also. Uh, and this is very similar to uh, also how distribution was developed. You had uh, basically, the for the half a year, you were messing with packages, you were packaging new stuff, uh, adding patches, disabled feature, featuring, enabled and other features. Then you just uh, made a build check. And when you had uh, more time, you just repeat the cycle until you hit the alphas and then you build the alpha and uh, shipped it to the QA. Uh, usually, the QA weren't even able to install it, so they just sh shipped it back so until you fixed it and, and so on and so on. Uh, this uh, was very uh, uh, was very difficult for release team uh, to actually uh, release some uh, proper uh, versions, especially uh, given the uh, early mi milestones like alpha, beta, beta, and so on. So. Uh, when with the increasing number of contributions, for example, with, which we had uh, in uh, OpenSUSE, uh, it uh, became so uh, so challenging to do so that uh, we needed to rethink uh, the complete uh, the situation. So we ins were inspired by the how uh, software development was improved by, for in for example, introducing unit testing and uh, test-driven development and so on. So we just uh, insert the QA step right into the development uh, of the whole distribution. The difference between development of in the individual projects and the distributions is that uh, in, in a regular project, you, it's kind of easy to do unit testing and you just can uh, test individual parts. But when we are talking about complete distribution, it's by definition uh, integration test at least. So for a distribution, we just basically copied the uh, QA from the, of the final releases or the, or the milestones and put it to the uh, development model or the development cycle itself. Uh, of course, uh, there, even if we had enough manpower to, to, to test all these uh, variously failing builds and whatever, uh, it would be a pretty boring job for is you for you uh, for a QA engineer just uh, each day of a week to go to work and install you know install the same release for <laughs> once again so so we definitely needed to to automate now that uh, gives that brings another set of problems because uh, since it's its whole distribution uh, you have uh, different bootloaders you have uh, different uh, 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 in the installation workflow, depending whether you want to install on one disk or more and in the RAID, like encrypted disks and so on. And of course, uh, different desktop environments and so So we needed uh, some universal system how to approach this, how to, how to do this. So, uh, and also uh, we needed to focus on our, on the target user. The target user of the distribution is uh, it's like uh, it's not another software. It's a uh, and it's a regular person. It's so uh, we need to test that uh, it's uh, usable for them. So uh, the first thing we uh, had to do that is uh, that the automated system to which is testing it uh, need to probably see what will uh, what a regular QA person see and what regular user see. So we just uh, you know take the VNC output of our this, uh, uh, virtual machines we were using, we were testing, uh, we were testing on. 
And uh, we just uh, created a bunch of uh, reference images and uh, our test engine now snapshot does not regularly takes a screenshot uh, each 25 milliseconds, more or less, something like that. And uh, compare it depending uh, on which stage of test you are, whether it, the output is actually correct or not. Um, this is another benefit that it works uh, for complete stack. You can test even a uh, BIOS if you, if you want with, that, with this, this kind of stuff. And uh, the next step uh, was so that if we, if, uh, we already have a VNC connection, we just uh, started to uh, uh, use the VN VNC for, uh, for input. So we don't need to uh, install anything new on this uh, system under test. We just, uh, Everything we test, we simulate the key, uh, keyboard uh, strokes. Initially, we were using uh, the QMU monitor to, uh, channel to simulate the key presses as, uh, on the PS2 input or something like, uh, like that. But uh, there were problems with it. That, uh, there were many dropped keys and small buffers, so it wasn't uh, typing reliably. Just uh, we change it to the to the VNC input. It's a good thing to know that uh, once you will will be writing the tests, uh, all you the all you all you do in the test is just uh, typing what you would do when you are using the uh, the, the machine. So when you combine all of this together, uh, you will get uh, something like like this. Um, this is uh, the reason why this presentation is 18 megabytes in size. Uh, and uh, also we see how the test engine sees it. Just it all, uh, it's, uh, by the way, it's uh, like two or three times faster than, uh, than in, the real, in the real life. That's because if you want to review the tests, uh, you don't want to spend 20 minutes looking at some video. Uh, Another thing is, uh, I don't know if you can say it, but uh, the, there are uh, usually some artifacts uh, in there. The artifacts are not from the uh, OpenQA itself. The, the OpenQA is uh, uh, doing uh, good screenshots, but this is the thing we can't yet catch in uh, using the OpenQA, as that uh, there is the uh, bug in our Intel drivers. So, uh, yeah, that's a uh, complete video. So, uh, when we finish our testing, we have a completely test uh, distribution, but when we ship it, uh, there are f uh, some few percentage of users who can't install it due to some hardware bugs, which we can't yet uh, uh, catch in, a, in, a, in a, our test environment. So, that's the first part, is that that's the test engine of the OpenQA. But for the distribution, that's, uh, that's not, not enough. As uh, I was talking, uh, you had, we have uh, plenty of con uh, different uh, combinations. We have uh, different DVD uh, work installation, workflow for DVD disk, uh, USB boot, uh, network installation, and uh, rescue images. All then all the different uh, encrypted disks or RAIDs or whatever you need. And of course, uh, text mode installation, uh, graphical, uh, graphical modes and so on. And uh, you don't uh, generally want to write uh, the test uh, from the scratch for each of these, uh, for each of, uh, for each of these uh, workflows. So in uh, OpenQA, uh, we kind of the get uh, with some, it's, uh, when you will first try to install it uh, or write the test, it will feel unnatural, the, the, how the tests are written. Uh, we have one, I will, yeah, I will talk about it uh, later, but uh, basically uh, in, a, in a, our front end where you can configure it, uh, we have uh, several tables like uh, called machines, system plate, and medias, where you put uh, different variables in, in it. Uh, the, uh, usually they are uh, gathered, uh, grouped in, uh, in these logical, um, logical groups. So 
uh, in machine in the machines you usually put how many disks it, uh, it has, uh, whether uh, it uses special networking and so on. On test templates, so whether you want to encrypt your disk, whether you want to separate home directory, or whether you want just plain installation. And of course, uh, products or media, it's, it's called now. You put the, the media type you are testing. Then uh, the OpenQA scheduler takes all of this uh, information that it, uh, it collects from these uh, tables and uh, generates all of uh, possible combinations and it generates jo test jobs, like here, which uh, collects all, uh, all the settings you have uh, from machines, uh, test templates, and products, and so from some uh, few uh, variables, you can generate like 10, so it's 70, even 100 jobs, whatever you have uh, configured. That's, a, that's a, at the end, when the uh, when it's all properly set up, for example, in, uh, for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, distribution, when the new build, new Im uh, image is uh, uh, created, the OpenQA automatically generates around 80 tests and, uh, and uh, run them. And of course, uh, there is the, the last benefit uh, of the OpenQA, and that's, that's automated, so there is, uh, well, there is downtown when downtime when it crashes, <laughs> but uh, usually not. And uh, besides that, it always works. It's also uh, working in parallel, so you can uh, add uh, numerals or uh, workers. So this is yeah. I just made up the num 18 number, but uh, we experimented with up to 50, 50 or 60 workers. So we were able to test uh, 60 tests uh, uh, in a parallel, so ho whole distribution you can test in like uh, two hours. And so, so it's uh, really uh, handy for, for, for this kind of uh, work. Uh, the important thing to remember is that uh, uh, even for OpenSUSE release model, the OpenQA is, the only, is only a part of all this. There is also the second part which is driving uh, the workflow and it's uh, in open build service, but uh, you should really check it out, but it's uh, another uh, topic. So take a, we will take a quick look uh, on how the architecture is, how it's designed. So uh, this is kind of uh, older picture, but I like the colors, so I use it all the time. Uh, we have the web UI node. Uh, on this uh, on this node, there is a web UI you can see as a user. There is a REST gateway, there is the web so WebSocket server, and the scheduler. There are also different uh, processes. You can have a separate database like MySQL or Postgres or SQLite. You can work with that too. Uh, this uh, this node actually uh, also takes care of the scheduling of, of this. Uh, uh, template for of these parameters I was talking about. The worker node, uh, this is, uh, you can have either, you can, this can be on one uh, computer or you can use uh, remote workers. And this is uh, basically only middle middleman between the test engine, which is the OS AutoInst, and the OpenQA. The OS AutoInst is the actual thing which uh, execute the test and uh, collects the screenshots and compare them and, and generate results from that. Uh, now this, uh, by, uh, uh, we have uh, the OS AutoInst, uh, so we can uh, use uh, different uh, backends, uh, test backends for it. By default, uh, we use uh, QMU, KVM QMU, QMU. Uh, that's uh, also the most feature-wise backend we have. And it's, uh, but uh, it's running uh, basically, it's managing itself uh, some uh, bunch, of, bunch of virtual machines. We have IPMI for uh, real hardware testing, but uh, you need to specialized hardware for it, which supports actually a, a IPMI protocol. But uh, in, if, you, if you have this one, you can eventually get uh, or capture some hardware bugs. But uh, the problem is that, uh, like with, with the uh, KVM, 
you can run multiple workers or multiple jobs on one machine. For the IPMI, you actually need a uh, different machine or one machine for one test. There is no uh, parallel execution. And then S390, PowerPC, Power UM, uh, just uh, Power UM is the latest uh, added. And uh, that's basically probably only for uh, enterprise segment. And uh, brief look into the, how the, the, the test architecture. All is written in parallel, but uh, don't be afraid. Uh, we are try, trying hard to hide it. So uh, we, are, we provide some uh, test API and just uh, like a type string and you uh, put a string and it type it, uh, types it in. So usually in test uh, you don't need some uh, different or complex algorithms. So you, so, uh, you can't say it's pedal. <laughs> uh, so the tests are divided in two parts. There is a test loader, it's uh, called main PM. And actually, in this test, uh, uh, you evaluate you this uh, when you include this. Uh, then this test may PM is uh, loaded. It uh, evol it gets all the variables so generate generate a combination of variables from the scheduler, and depending on of these variables, it includes various tests from the test uh, subdirectory. Sub in this uh, directory, you have uh, individual uh, tests. Uh, then the third part is the needles. This is the reference images with, uh, uh, with proper metada metadata, because we don't need to match uh, whole complete screens at all, all the time. We are usually interested only small uh, cutouts for it. But uh, tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m., unfortunately, the, the first one. <laughs> Uh, at AE 113, so it will be an open QA workshop when uh, you will have the opportunity to you know, do some hands-on session and see how it's actually implemented. And uh, yeah, let's see about uh, some uh, features why you should consider open QA and why you should use it for uh, not only distributions but on, for whatever. Uh, uh, applications you are using. We finally think we even, uh, or some someone even managed to run uh, Android, uh, Android testing or using OpenQA, so you can try. <laughs> uh, the main, main selling point is uh, quite powerful reporting. You already saw the video recording, it's done by default. Then you have all the screenshots whether during the test in the, in they are uh, displayed in the order as they were uh, as the tests were executed. Even the text output when you just uh, look for the serial serial console and what's what's there, it's included in there uh, as a picture. When uh, everything is okay, the the, the, this, the border is green. When not, the border is border is red. And when you click on it, you actually see. Uh, the, the screenshots, there is a slider, you can move it left and right, and, uh, and uh, it will just show you, uh, usually you will see what's, what's the problem, usually. But uh, uh, sometimes, for example, when fonts is changed or little color variations, uh, you, for a, for a flawed humans as we are, <laughs> it will look uh, like 100% uh, same, but uh, OpenQA would say no, like 90% and it, that's failed. Uh, there is one reason for that also that the OS Auto and the test engine um, to uh, save resources, it actually downgrade the, color, the num number of colors to like 16 colors or something like that. So something which look uh, quite similar in the normal, normal original form, though the, the matching algorithm can see it completely differently and, and uh, don't, you can't, uh, it may not match. Also, uh, we have we can uh, capture audio, uh, so we have some audio tests, and of course, as uh, as mathematicians, mathematicians and even computer scientists, when uh, they are presented with some problem, they try to find whether there is a, tri a trivial reliable solution. If, if not, they will convert it to the known problem. 
So we have, we capture the audio and uh, actually we convert the audio to the visible form using some uh, Fourier transformation and then we just compare the images. That's how we test uh, whether the audio is working or not. So <laughs> quite, quite, quite a neat. Uh, except for that, uh, 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 for, uh, more we have uh, quite, uh, you can upload anything from the test machines you want. The first four is, the, uh, is always there. The video, the bars, this is the generated variables for inspection, the serial output of the machine and the logging uh, data of the test engine itself. But then you can just uh, select whatever, you just uh, put in the test the upload logs and the name of the and path to the file, to the file and it will upload it and you can then see it in the, for the review when it, whether everything is uh, okay or not. And the last one is asset. Uh, it uh, basically works the same as the logs. The only difference is that uh, assets uh, can be reused in some different, uh, in other, other tests. And uh, also there is uh, listed the, the, the original media which was used for testing. So you can actually even down download it. So for example, when you get generate new and new uh, images each day, you can go back uh, and use the image from two days ago. Or you don't have to use always the latest which is on, on the build service. We also uh, support quite complex uh, test cases. Uh, this one, this is the uh, like a chain relation. This is the dependent test. Uh, this basically means you specify that this test will run only when this, this first one will uh, finish and finish uh, as, uh, as, uh, as a su successfully finish as a pass. Uh, so. Firstly, at first, as first, you can uh, uh, preserve resources. For example, when the installation failed, you just don't need to rerun the installation again and again when it's broken. So you save the time. And of course, you can mark uh, at the install job that I want to upload, I want uh, uh, the result of the, the, when the actual state of the machine when the test is finished to be uploaded to the OpenQA server itself. And then the rest uh, of the test will start uh, from the point the last, uh, last uh, test finishes. So you don't, you don't need to reinstall in this test everything from the scratch. So for example, here you can have install, install KDE, and then here you have uh, test KDE with uh, whatever, on Wayland, on X, on X, on whatever you want. Uh, the next are uh, multi-machines tests and their combinations. Uh, this is very uh, useful when you have client server uh, models and uh, you can't have uh, all these uh, uh, services on one, on one uh, uh, machine. For example, when you are testing DHCP or some network stuff, you, or you need some test support for it. So we, you can say that uh, this one is a master, it's a, para, it's a uh, parent for and it should be running in parallel with these tests. So uh, the scheduler makes sure that all the tests are scheduled in the correctly, so the tests uh, are not waiting for, for uh, some blocked uh, workers using another jobs. And of course, it also maintains that, for example, when, this, when the parent uh, uh, fails in some test and is terminated, all of uh, the children will be terminated. Uh, as a side note, when uh, you will be uh, watching or going through our GitHub uh, commit log, when this feature was implemented, this is the git log is full of uh, chained, uh, killed children and parents. So uh, it was actually pointed to me that I should stop uh, talking about about children and parents in this context. Uh, related to this is uh, networking. Because when you want to test uh, the, for example, the HCP server or networking stuff, you usually need to more uh, ensure that the, the network is uh, separated and that uh, you use uh, various other uh, configuration. 
By default, we are using QEMU uh, user networking, and uh, the individual QEMU machines can't talk to each other. They are, com they are isolated. They have access to the outside internet, but they can't communicate between themselves. Uh, the easiest one is the ta uh, tap networking, uh, this, uh, but uh, the easiest one for us to implement, but uh, it's uh, probably the hardest to set up since all the setup uh, of the networking is on the actual administrator of the, of the OpenQA system. Then we have a virtual distribution, uh, distributed Ethernet. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's a QEMU feature too, but uh, uh, the, f the good thing is that the scheduler uh, or the OS automates will know uh, based on w in which group these uh, tests are that uh, it should inter interconnect them. So it automatically creates the connection between these uh, jobs when they are parallel to, when they are running in parallel configuration, then it knows that they should be automatically connected. The same is with OpenWay switch, but there is a, a the open base which is a little harder to configure because it's a combination with uh, top networking and uh, and open base switch which creates uh, the interconnection uh, yeah also the open base switch is running uh, it adds another another service uh, to the to the worker system so uh, when you are uh, developing, you hit, of course, you hit the bugs there, and sometimes they are quite clear to see. But uh, many times you need to uh, extract some other logs and don't want to restart the test from uh, from the scratch each time. So we uh, ha have a support. Uh, you can enable that uh, the, as the test is running. It's divided into individual test modules. And after uh, each module is passed, uh, the new snapshot is uh, stored in the QMU, uh, uh, QMU image. Yeah, it's also uh, important to know that this is only available to QMU uh, backend. For example, when you are, uh, it may you are screwed, you don't have this one. Uh, and um, the storing of this snapshot you can use for two things. Uh, the one thing is uh, during the test development that you will adapt the test and continue when you left. Or uh, you can you take this uh, chemo image uh, and boot it from outside of, this, uh, of the test environment and uh, uh, look for the files you are interested in and, and other logs and so on. So you can either test uh, debug the issue itself or debug the test. Uh, another thing is uh, interactive mode and uh, remote, and, and we also remo uh, enable remote uh, VNC connection to the to the uh, systems under test. So when the test is running, you have a icon when you click, and it will uh, essentially pause the test execution. And you can either generate scripts. You can uh, here you under the test. You have uh, the host name where it's running and the VNC port you should connect to. You can connect to the machine, do your stuff, uh, update update needles and so on. And then, if everything works correctly, uh, you should continue. But uh, sometimes uh, uh, this interactive mode uh, is a little fragile, so you need to be patient with it. And um, uh, the one thing uh, which uh, the administrator of a whole this, this of whole uh, distribution release process should, uh, may be interested in is the infrastructure to the other other uh, services. So we have a REST uh, interface. You can get a uh, query for test results. How in and uh, trigger the new test, so uh, download uh, assets, download uh, yeah, basic assets. And there is a plan, there's a quite a big uh, API using the rest, but uh, so you can uh, hook it to other syst uh, systems. In our example, in OpenSUSE uh, way, the build service uh, is hooked to the OpenQA, so when the uh, there is uh, one, some cron jobs running, which are checking the state. But when the build uh, is finished, or the, when the DVD build is finished, it will automatically uh, trigger open QA to download it, and, and trigger the new schedule completely new tests and so on. 
Uh, we have uh, background tasks, uh, which uh, helps with uh, cleaning all old results, and uh, uh, it can also, uh, it's a feature added by, by Fedoras Adam here. <laughs> Uh, it will automatically download uh, the ISO in the in the background, and of course, uh, various databases support uh, the the authentication, the external authentication. There is also one I didn't list here. This is fake authentication. That's mainly for the test for the test development uh, because uh, it annoys. Uh, at least I went. I was annoyed. Uh, to always need to relog to my test development, uh, to my machine where I was developing the OpenQA. So we have a fake authentication, which is you hit login and immediately you are, you are logged in as uh, administrator. So uh, with uh, the infrastructure in uh, integration comes uh, scalability of it. Uh, the funny thing that uh, originally OpenQA was a single process, single thread date. So when you added more workers to it, well, it uh, stops to, well, it, uh, you hit uh, quite uh, often timeouts and, it, and uh, jobs, were, just jobs were terminated due to it and so on. So uh, we've switched to preferred, uh, to modulicus, modulicus preferred module, which uh, essentially is a multi-process uh, one. But that's, uh, that's it for our web UI. You can scale up when you have uh, enough uh, CPU power and memory. You can add more workers. It's a similar uh, thing as Apache workers. You just add more workers and hope uh, it will solve your uh, your issues. <laughs> uh, for the workers, uh, you can have this, you can scale it up if you have uh, resources, or you can add uh, remote workers. Uh, for uh, scaling up, uh, because uh, the worker usually needs uh, has a, has a two high demand uh, processes. One is the actual Quimu running the test, and the other one is uh, the uh, the system which is uh, grabbing all the input and comparing the picture, the images, and and generating video and so on. So for uh, in, um, in my case, I usually reserve uh, two cores, two CPU cores, if, or if we have hyper-threading with these pseudo cores, uh, to one open QA worker. So for eight cores machine, uh, we are running four workers usually. And of course, uh, the memory constraints aren't too high uh, for, the, for today's standard, uh, because by default, the open QA will create uh, virtual machines with two gigabytes of RAM. So for the RAM is really not an issue here. The CPU power is. Okay, now last the contacts. If uh, you are interested in it, we don't have any some uh, open QA dedicated to mailing list or IRC. We are all hanging out on uh, OpenSUSE factory IRC channel email OpenSUSE factory OpenSUSE org. Uh, we have progress uh, for. Uh, for our issues, but you can use also issues record on GitHub. Uh, this uh, whole thing is open sourced, including the tests for Open uh, OpenSUSE. Uh, they are like OS Auto in this three OpenSUSE, and uh, it's all GPL version two. You are free to try it and uh, contribute back. So that's basically it. yes, okay. Uh, for now, it's only uh, KVM Quimu uh, because we are not uh, using some uh, like we are not using libvirt for management. We are directly the the S auto instance engine directly executes uh, Quimu command binary with all the parameters to construct what you want. So so far now is this there is uh, svirt support, but I don't know how exact uh, how uh, mature it is. It was added quite recently, so so far. I didn't see any tests on it, but yeah. You showed us some you know, video from mm -hmm. the, like, yeah. yes. Is there, is there some uh, like output in XML or the mod or some well, HTML? 
uh, the results if page? We, yeah, mm -hmm. if we, we go mm -hmm. to show, watch on the video. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, uh, you s there were the screenshots. I actually can maybe ask, show you uh, well, if the network, of course, will work. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I need to log in back. This is annoying, but <laughs> but yeah, there is uh, there is absolutely a way to uh, see all the results in the pictures. Uh, there is an overview page. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, I am trying to log into the network, but yeah, no, it's I not. Yeah. Well. Okay. I will. It should be. Yeah, I got it, but uh, I just need to do. Okay. Now. So this is for uh, for the open su open uh, SUSE test. For a thumb for let's let's check the latest tumbleweed results. I hope the network yes, and you see, uh, the, it's a, uh, the, yes, I, of course, uh -huh. better, right? So this is the usual, usually the overview for the latest uh, build. Num this is the build number we have for the for the build service uh, for the open uh, tumbleweed, and you just this is all the tests we uh, we run for the test suits okay? like. Uh, uh, they, co they usually test a combination of things. And let's see, I will check the KDE here. These are actually the, the green, no, one, the, there are two greens. The greener green is uh, everything's okay, and uh, more of the yellowish green, it's uh, we uh, need to use some workarounds to successfully pass or, uh, all the tests. So we, we, you can even uh, mark a note work when you use the workarounds. And then when you click, you have uh, all the tests which were performed. Uh, and uh, yeah, you see the, all the results, what it looks like. You see this, the, here was used some workaround. And it was used here because it's a different color of the, of the border. So this is the kind. But this is for uh, displaying as a, for, a, for a user. Uh, we don't have, you can ask uh, the re using the REST API for the uh, general overall status of the job, but we don't have like a XML file from the, for example, like uh, uh, Jenkins does the JUnit file and so on. But we have uh, inter, ob inter, we can work with uh, Jenkins that you can uh, run uh, Jenkins jobs from the OpenQA and when the uh, JUnit is, uh, you collect the JUnit, and uh, we have a functions which will parse it and put uh, the, uh, the, J, the uh, Jenkins results in the similar view as this one. So you will you will see all in all in one one page. Yeah, and then there is uh, yeah, the the logs and whatever it was collected from C. Uh, the, the log from the test engine usually looks like this, so you see what you scheduled, the, all the t t tests. Here is the, uh, the actual command line which created the KMU machine. Again, connection to VNC, and then the test usually, yeah, you see whether the matching and so on. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, when you click, uh, well, for example, on this welcome, oh, let's, let's see some more complex uh, test case. You click on this, you, and you get the source code of, uh, of the test. Uh, the source code viewer isn't very, um, uh, isn't very, like I would say, you can use it for to see uh, the, the actual test. But you see that it's based on some console test, and this console test usually have some other modules, uh, some helpers or whatever you, you can you you can use, 
And so far in this uh, source viewer, you can't click on it and uh, show the underlying source. We are aware of it and have uh, a bug uh, about it, but uh, so far, I don't know, maybe it will be implemented, but I don't know when. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it's a code. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh -huh. yes. We have uh, 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 in the test API. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm out of time, but uh, tomorrow. tomorrow exactly. That's the that's the that's the right way to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. There were two questions or so two squares, but I have uh, three more, so three more questions. <laughs> no, okay. I'm out of time. I know. Thank you. <laughs>